Welcome to Lady Family Live. I'm Jason Lady. I'll be your your host for this lovely evening of uh, tasting through some new release wines. Uh, to all our wine club members joining, thank you so much. We really appreciate your support. <clears throat> you, of course, mean the most. You mean everything to us. You keep us going. You motivate us to make these great wines and continue to to push the envelope of quality and what have you. Um, we'd love to see you out here. If you haven't come for a visit recently, uh, please take a look at uh, coming out and seeing us sometime soon. We just held our uh, first pickup party that we haven't, you know, we haven't hosted one of those in many years, but we just hosted that and uh, very successful. People loved coming and seeing all the new things happening here. Um, speaking of more things happening here, we have three incredible events coming your way and we won't actually have another, another webinar till the uh, fall releases. So I wanted to make sure that you guys got these dates, but up, coming up in May, May 19th, we have our rock block party, which is always an incredibly fun party. We get a live band, awesome food. We celebrate the Rock Box Series wines, which we'll talk about tonight, um, often opening large formats and library wines. And it's casual fun, but awesome wine uh, all in one. So great, uh, great party. That is on May 19th. And there are still some tickets available online. They're getting low. Um, and I know the the reserved VIP se seating is, uh, is sold out. But if you want to come by, uh, reach out to us, let us know, check it out online. Um, later this year, this summer, August 17th, we'll have our poetry dinner in the vineyard. This is the pinnacle event that we host. Um, we, we set up a beautiful table down the center lane of the vineyards. You're outside, you're tasting the new vintages of our Marla Blanc, uh, which by the way, the 2022 vintage just got 97 points from decanter. So for those of you who grabbed the 2022, um, it's, it's getting some good press. So, uh, you'll get to taste the 2023, the new release of Marla Blanc at that dinner, along with the new vintage of poetry, which is the 2021. Of course, we'll have some library wines and other fun things to taste as well and incredible food. So that's an elegant, elevated affair. Check it out, August 17th. Last but not least, something a little more fun and casual again, our Harvest Barbecue is going to come back on October 6th. So if you want to come uh, check out what's happening during harvest, maybe see some fruit on the vines, um, the Harvest Barbecue is a great opportunity to come and hang out with us, um, and not and and it's a little more a little more casual than say the poetry dinner. So lots of options, um, lots of tastings happening here, of course, backstage, and we've got the VIP area open now, so you can be outside. I'm looking out over this beautiful view today. I think it was around 70 degrees, and so the uh, the warm temperatures are returning to Napa. It's a great time to come visit. All right. So that covers uh, the basic stuff there. Um, let's get into talking about some wine. I've got all the the uh, wine club new releases open tonight. I have first, of course, the Fell Farrington uh, Chardonnay, which is a small, tiny, tiny, small lot Chardonnay. Travis, you want to try some? Yeah, you sitting here. Why not? <laughs> so we've got the Fell Chardonnay, 2022 vintage. This is 100% Chardonnay coming from the Farrington Vineyard. It is. Uh, like a lot of the Fell Chardonnay is very fresh. It's focused focused on vibrancy and, and showcasing that cool climate that the uh, Anderson Valley is known for. Um, the Farrington Vineyard sits at the south end of the Anderson Valley, so it tends to be a little bit warmer uh, than, than further north where, say, Savoy is or some of the other vineyards that we work with. But uh, in this wine straight away, you're going to get those fresh aromatics. There's a lot of tart, you know, Granny Smith apple here, uh, you know, lemon, um, it's a very lifted wine and something that, you know, you'll want to chill down, open up on a warm day. If you're pairing this with food, you know, I'm thinking ceviches, um, you know, lighter, lighter fish dishes, uh, anything with some nice acidity, you know, maybe like a, any, uh, um, you know, salads where you can have like a lemon based vinaigrette or something like that, like something that's got some, uh, some acidity. on the palate, you know, mouth-watering, you can feel it, layers of flavor, um, very, very bright wine. You know, at this point, this wine, I feel even a couple months in bottle might help it just integrate a little bit further. It's a, it's a new release. So, you know, this is something that if you wanted to see what Chardonnay could do three, four years down the road, this would be something maybe to, to experiment with a little bit, see how that acidity starts to integrate and how some of those richer flavors start to come out. But in the short term, very enjoyable, just bright, um, delicious, and built for, you know, warm days. So enjoy it. 
uh, only 80 cases, I believe, made. So like tiny, tiny amount. If you're a Fell member or a Lady Family, um, Lady Family Wines Club member, you would have got some of that and uh, enjoy it because there's not going to be a lot of that. That is the 2022 vintage. We're going to stick on 2022 with our next wine. That is the Pinot Noir. So this is the Anderson Valley Pinot Noir, which uh, always is a, a reflection of the Anderson Valley on the whole. So um, unlike the Chardonnay that we just had, which is coming from a single vineyard, the Pinot Noir here comes from a selection of sites. And so you get an expression of the overall valley in this wine. You get some of the warmer characteristics of the south, the cooler characteristics of the north. And, you know, I'm noticing in this wine as well, just like the Chardonnay, that there's um, a lot of aromatic lift here. It's very bright, very, um, you know, focused on cranberry and, you know, red cherry. It's just a very pretty, um, stylishly uh, lifted wine. I know I've used that term, term a lot so far tonight, but I'm not going to be talking all night. You're not going to have to listen to me once we get Travis on here, but that's what I'm getting from this wine. It's, it's, uh, it's reflecting again in 2022. This was a drought year, a warm year. Um, you know, instead of risking it and leaving the fruit out too long and, you know, running the risk of things drying out and, and, and raisins and all these, you know, challenges we have in wine growing, uh, you know, you pull the fruit in a little bit earlier and it retains a lot of the character and the freshness um, of the vineyards. That's delicious. I mean, there's, Again, I'm coming back to those same fruit components, some tart cherry and tart cranberry in there. Um, very much, you know, uh, uh, if you're an old world Pinot Noir lover and you, and you like to have brightness and acidity in your, in your Pinot, you know, this is going to be for you. It's not a big bruiser style, you know, high alcohol, high octane uh, Pinot Noir. So great with uh, almost similar to the Chardonnay, some white fish here I think would be great you know, grilled uh, shrimp on the barbecue it's in summertime, maybe even, you know, get, put this in the fridge for 10 or 15 minutes before you enjoy, just get a little bit of that chill on it um, to kind of up, up, upgrade the, uh, the, the refreshing qualities. But uh, yeah, things like that, light white fish dishes, um, you know, milder cheeses, things like that, uh, or just, you know, poolside on a beautiful warm day that I'm sure is Coming our way soon, right? We're all kind of ready for summer. By the way, the chat function is open. I forgot to mention that, but let us know where you're joining from. Let us know if you've got anything open tonight, if you're enjoying anything in particular. If you have questions, uh, this is your time to ask them. Um, you know, of course, you can always email us or call us if you've got questions, but um, you've got myself, you've got Travis right beside me, and we are here to answer your questions about our wines, our winemaking, the new releases, all the fun stuff. So Travis Bullard, winemaker for Cliff Lady Vineyards. Welcome to the welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, great to have you back. Were you on the last one? I think so. Chris. Okay. All right. Um, well, welcome back. Uh, how is uh, you know being being dad of four little boys? How's that going for you? Good. <laughs> it's busy. They're yeah, very busy. busy. So how old is the youngest now? The youngest is like almost five months. Five months. Yeah. So, so right now he's like grabbing everything that's put in front of him and really trying to eat our food. He's like putting it, like he, just chewing on, on, on it. Yeah, he's not yep. quite old enough to eat food, but right. he's trying. Very well, that's hard. good. That's he's good. Pretty, he's practicing. Four boys. I got one and I'm like, man, that's a, that's a handful. Four though. Kudos to you, man. Thank you. So Travis, you're the man behind, I should say, you're one, <laughs> one of the people, one of, one of the people. <laughs> um, Chris Tynan, of course, our director of winemaking. Uh, Keely Ryan working as our enologist. Uh, or she assistant winemaker. Assistant winemaker. Assistant winemaker. Assistant winemaker. Look at that. Basically, as so, a you know, we've got an incredible, uh, you know, youthful, fun, energetic winemaking team here making these incredible wines. Uh, so tell us a bit about the, the Sauvignon Blanc. This is, um, I know it doesn't show up well. This is the 2023 vintage. So brand new relief uh, from Cliff Lady Vineyards. Always a sign of summer, you know, the, the spring right. and warm temperatures when we release this wine. First look into the 2023 vintage. So why don't you give us a little rundown yeah. on how 2023 was here in Napa Valley? Yeah, so this is the first time we get to talk about the 2023 vintage. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not a hype man at all, but we are um, crazy excited about, about the 2023 wines. Um, it was just a beautiful vintage, um, really cool, um, cool spring, warm summer. Um, no big heat spikes, really prolonged um, growing season all through fall, all mm -hmm. through harvest. We had really beautiful um, set, no frost damage. So um, both 
great quality and abundance. Um, so basically everyone's happy at the winery from the winemaking team all the right. way to the accounting team. Um, and for those people that, that like great um, Napa Valley wines, there's going to be a lot of them. So um, all in all, we're very, very excited about the 23s. Um, some of, I can say like with confidence, some of the best wines we tasted in tank as they were fermenting mm. through harvest. So, I mean, um, everyone was happy during harvest. It was really nice when you get that first um, first taste of the fermenter and you're like, wow, there's something special here. Wow. Uh, so that's something to look forward to um, for all of the 23s, not just the whites, but also the reds. Um, but specifically this, this 2023 um, Sauvignon Blanc. I think the story with this wine is, you know, it's, um, we're continually um, moving towards more estate driven. Um, so more of this fruit is coming off of our uh, vineyards that we own and farm ourselves. Um, so we've got uh, Sauvignon Blanc up in Calistoga, mm -hmm. um, also on the Rhythm Vineyard here in Sagley District, and then also on our new um, High Five Vineyard down in Carneros. So that's right. There's a lot of Sauvignon Blanc, also um, Semillon down there. So this wine is about 77% Sauvignon Blanc and 23% Semillon. That that Semillon um, percentage has gradually grown as we've moved more of the production um, or the vineyard production in-house. Mm -hmm. um, this is still um, primarily barrel fermented mm -hmm. and aged. I think um, it's somewhere around like 86% um, oak. Mm -hmm. um, not all of that's new. Like it's probably around 25, 30% new oak of that, of that oak percentage. Okay. Um, so there's like, I think when you taste this wine, there's definitely more richness and creaminess that you get from some of that oak ferment and aging, um, but not an overwhelming like oak profile because we have yeah. um, so much used oak. Like it doesn't there. taste like oak. No, yeah, it doesn't. But it oak. adds that, that creamy quality. Yeah, there's a lot of richness there. Sure. Um, and softness from um, from those oak ferments, but not like an overwhelmingly. Like so vanilla. what does that semillon add? You know, 23% is not insignificant, right. right? I mean, it's it's probably more than any uh, other Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc that I've seen. Yeah. You know, it's a lot. So so give us some insight, you know, what's the what's driving that and then why do you guys like blending that and then what does it add to the, how does it complement Sauvignon Blanc? Yeah, good question. Um, I think Chris and I are both fans of Semillon. We're fans of, of um, White Bordeaux and um, that Semillon like really plays well with Sauvignon Blanc. It kind of like softens and rounds the edges. There's a lot of um, waxiness um, and richness and creaminess that you get from some of that Sauvignon, or that Semillon. So it adds a lot of weight on the palate mm -hmm. um, that kind of comes across as like um, just a very like soft plush um, Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can feel it as soon as you take a sip, it just wants to work its way to the corners of your mouth. Yeah. A lot. Of, and as far as like flavors wise, you get a lot of like, um, white flowers, you get a lot of honey, um, uh -huh. you get a lot of like kind of pear, like those, okay. some, some of those, um, softer flavors about that. Yeah. Um, and it kind of plays off against, um, maybe the like zesty, like lemon, lime, citrus component that we get a lot of, of our Sauvignon Blanc. Um, this particular, um, vintage, you know, we have a lot of more tropical flavors in it. Mm -hmm. Um, not necessarily like when I say tropical flavors for this wine, particularly, it's not really in the like, um, coconut, pineapple, mango realm. It's a little more like, um, lychee, um, maybe like passion fruit, dragon fruit, like kind of that, that, that realm of. Of a... could be like a like a on an, a less ripe pineapple like it's, i know sure. what you mean it's yeah, not yeah. that like which you can get sometimes in chardonnay or yeah right um you know those super ripe sauvignon blancs like you know but i, I feel yeah. you it's definitely leaning a little more tropical than yeah. the prior vintages which were more like what stone fruit dominant yeah, maybe exactly and maybe like a little more grapefruit in the citrus note sure than the typical kind of like, you know, we still have a little bit of that lemon curd, but it's not quite as pronounced mm -hmm. this year as, as it is in years past. It smells great. I mean, I, I know this was bottled only a few weeks ago. So, I mean, in <laughs> yeah. the coming weeks and months, it's going to, you know, even be even more expressive and start to integrate for further. Sure. Um, for anyone, you know, interested, we still have a little bit of the 2022 available. So if you, you know, if you want to have uh, our Sauvignon Blanc with a little bit of a more that integrated quality, um, I truly appreciate that. I, you know, it's funny, these wines, 
Uh, we don't talk about the ageability of Salvium Blanc very often, um, but we've opened some of those older, you know, 2014s and 15s and 16s, and uh, they're still very pleasurable to drink. Yeah. Uh, but 2022 right now, in my opinion, is just very well integrated. It's a lovely wine. Um, fun to try both. So if you're interested, um, let us know. We might be able to still get you some of that 2022 um, if you're looking for a little bit more of that uh, integration. But very fresh right here, you know, straight out of the gate. Um, totally agree with you on the fruit profile. And it has that trademark Cliff Lady texture uh, that people know and love about this wine. So great work. You know, oh, great you. vintage, great work. I mean, it's mm -hmm. nice that it, they made it easy on you uh, or Mother Nature made it easier on right. you in 2023. Obviously, we'll be excited to talk more about 2023 when the 2023 Reds are released, uh, which is still, what, a good year plus away. Right. Um, you know, you guys are working on on um, initial blending at this point. I mean, that you probably haven't even... We've really... gone through the first pass, so okay. we've, we've tasted everything. Um, and in the next couple of weeks, we're going to sit down and, and do the first blending session on the 2023s. Just a quick question here from uh, Daniel. He's asking, uh, is it usually more common to age in stainless steel um, in regard to Sauvignon Blanc? So what do you guys see? Uh, yes, typically? for yeah. sure. Like in, and especially in Napa, um, you know, there's a much, there's an added expense um, to aging in barrel that, that, you know, a lot of people, Sauvignon Blancs, like don't, you know, that's not really the price point they're going for. So mm -hmm. they, they can't, they can't really support um, putting it and aging it in, in, in oak versus stainless steel. We just find that like, you know, we still like aging the Sauvignon Blanc in stainless steel and it's always a component of the blend. Mm -hmm. um, but we just like some um, of the richness and creaminess and softness that that the wine opens up when, when you age it in barrel. Mm -hmm. um, there are really beautiful components about stainless steel. You know, it's very, it's very pure. Like it's very, um, you know, you can kind of get like a lot more of the um, mineral flavors, um, but sometimes it can be a little austere. So that's why we, yeah, that's why we right. like to use it as a component of the blend to make a more complex, um, final product. Great. Cool. Thanks for the question, Daniel. Yeah, thank you. Nice one. Um, all right. So we're going to now go back in time to 2011, um, which was your second harvest here. This was, yeah, my second, second harvest, harvest of Travis. I mean, been with us for a very long time. Uh, but second harvest at, at Cliff Lady Vineyards was the 2011 vintage, um, you know, a vintage that that uh, critically was not praised, um, but since then has become sort of a sort of an insider's favorite. Uh, you know, uh, there's a following for this vintage because it it was very much um, a cool vintage for Napa Valley. And and Travis, you know, I'll let you expand more on that. Uh, let us know what was 2011 like. I mean, you were here. You were it's hard to remember. So. <laughs> they're starting to get more and more difficult. This is the Rock Block series, by the way. 2011 Rock Block series, Moon Dance Dream. Um, yeah, the growing season. It was cool and wet from start all the way through harvest. So, um, you know, that's definitely the hallmark of this vintage. It's a it's a cool vintage in Napa. Very rare, and this was. Um, you know, we've got, we got a lot of water in, in winter, which was great. Like, you know, for starting off the growing season, all the, all the, um, underground water table was refilled. Mm -hmm. Like everything was, um, everything looked great. And then, um, the rain didn't stop. And basically, mm -hmm. you know, it was very, very cool summer, cool growing season, um, which kind of pushed everything. Everything was delayed. Yep. Um, and then moving into harvest, like we had, um, a couple of rainstorms come through. So, yeah. you know, we were dealing with um, rain during harvest and with picking. So, you know, we really, you you had to be nimble on your feet. You kind of had to um, be very thoughtful of when and what you were harvesting. Um, it was difficult to get the optimal ripeness. It was difficult to get to pick a block um, yeah. when it was ripe. And then, and then eventually we had a big rainstorm that came like in the middle of October that, right that, um, you know, you kind of had to make the call, like, are we going to bring it in everything in before that? Or are we yep. going to let it go? Um, so I remember for harvest, um, we ended up bringing in pretty much all that fruit before that last rainstorm, okay. um, which just was, um, for us, it was, a, was a massive undertaking. You know, we ended up working around the clock here. It was, wow. it was the only time I've ever been here. We, we had a few shifts, yeah, but working around shift. the clock. Yep. Um, and luckily, uh, we had signed up to demo the optical sorter. 
Um, so one of the things I think quality wise, like really helped us out was the fact that um, we were demoing this optical sorter unit um, and that let us harvest a lot more before the rain and process it really quickly. Yeah, get it in the um, so it was, sure. we yep. processed it a lot faster than we would have been otherwise. Um, and it actually kind of led us to the decision of uh, seeing the benefits of the quality benefits of having an optical sort of machine. Um, and so that kind of led us to, to, you know, purchasing one for the 2012 vintage, but mm -hmm. we actually did demo and use it um, during 2011 for the first time. So there you got you, there you go, right. You've got 2023, which, you know, you can pick at your leisure. It's, it's much more relaxed and, and, you know, mother nature's working along with you. And then in 2011, it's almost the opposite, right? You've got, Cooler temperatures, what makes it makes it harder to achieve ripeness. You've got rain, so you know berries are swelling and some are bursting and things. It you know th there's a question here from from Alejandro and you know why wasn't the vintage praised? You know the uh, the writers, the journalists, the critics, they are aware of of you know the conditions and the climate throughout the growing season. And so uh, when you have those challenges, typically it's going to sway the way they feel about the vintage and the wines in in general. Right. Um, so even though, you know, we did all of these things, like we brought the fruit in before, um, you know, the big rainstorms in October, we worked around the clock to get the fruit into the winery. We employed the optical sorter to help us sort out all the, you know, berries and things that we didn't want. It's at the end, the, in the end of the day, the stuff that was going in the tank was Beautiful. high quality, right? So, you know, the resulting wines show, I mean, I will say they show that it was a cooler vintage, right? right. Like there's characteristics in this wine that are more akin I would say to drinking a ball of Bordeaux right. and, and, you know, for a Bordeaux inspired winery, like that's kind of cool. I actually appreciate about yeah. this wine and about our winery that the, our wines authentically reflect vintage. We don't, right. you know, add things or remove things to try to, you know, hide what potentially could um, show some vintage variation. Right. So, you know, luckily here uh, in this wine, I mean, you guys didn't make yeah. a lot of wine I, either, right? No, we didn't. Um, all the volumes were down, yields were down. I think like to answer the question why I wasn't praised at first, it's like, it's just an outlier mm. vintage, right? So it's like, it's outside of the norm, which I think for the press, maybe it's like hard for them to handle or judge right. or- like a feeding frenzy. You know, I think if you, like to, use, to your point, I think if you put the 2011 Napa's in with the lineup of Bordeaux, like it would get praised mm -hmm. as being great and, and fitting in. But, you know, we're used to, you know, we're not used to dealing with rainy, wet, cold vintages. Yeah. So it just, it just showcased as an outlier. Um, well, the wine is uh, mostly Cabernet. I mean, it's 87%. You've got Petit Verdot, Malbec, Merlot in there. 829 cases. I mean, that's that's fairly small production um, for any wine in general. Uh, I know this in 2011, we made only like 400 cases of poetry or something like that. So, you know, it's also where you make less of your top wines. And so the wines, you know, below it benefit from the fruit that would normally go into those top wines, right? So, you know, the, the bottom core of the portfolio tends to uh, lift when you when you have to, you know, um, declassify things like that. So yeah. I've found in general that, you know, you guys did an amazing job. And Thank you. Um, I actually served the 2011 poetry at my wedding. That's how much I like it. Yeah. And for people who haven't tried the 2011s recently, like they are aging fantastically. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah. You know, out of the gate, um, you know, people were um, like not used to getting some of those like kind of herbaceous green flavors, but those have all, you know, aged mm -hmm. really beautifully. Like I would say the 2011s are very, they're, they're very elegant wines. Um, and they have really, um, really great, like chocolate and dark flavors, like um, blueberries and blackberries. They're not as like ripe, but like um, they're, they have maybe a little more like spice to them. And, and like, I definitely said, get spice. Yeah. And, you know, I get, I get like a, Plums and cigar boxes. Yeah, it's gonna be like umami kind of, yeah. you know, flavor, savory. savory notes. Uh, yeah. Which th that chocolate is there, like, yeah. and that's always kind of there with Stagsley District, but um, holding up very well. I mean, I encourage anybody curious uh, to try a twenty eleven. I mean, I think this is a great representation of, um, you know, one of our one of our better wines um, in a in a tough year, and. Uh, Wow. Delicious. For anyone that like has trouble aging wine. I mean, it's a great opportunity. Right. If you taste that wine and you always you wonder like, hey, it's great now. What would it be like in 10 years? I mean, yeah. it's a good opportunity and, and a good vintage to to go back and look. Um, you know, if you're ever hesitant in in purchasing a cooler Napa 
uh, cooler vintage Napa cab in the future, you can tell yourself like, oh, no, I tried that and they're going to be great in 10 years. Exactly. Yeah. No, this is very well done despite the challenges you guys had. Nice work. Thank you. Harvest intern. Well, you know, you were no. a harvest intern at that point. Intern, in, intern in 10. I so you would have been... I was either lab, lab, lab or, an, or an ologist. An ologist, sure. somewhere, like that. <laughs> somewhere in there. So long ago. <laughs> we're just a couple of old guys now, right? Hanging out, tasting wine. All right. Now we're going to fast forward uh, 10 years after 2011 to the 2021 vintage. Uh, this is Diamond Sky. So we, we just had Moondance Dream. So the Moondance block, the Dream On block being uh, highlighted there. Here we got Diamond Sky, which I'm getting the question, of course, all the time. Oh, it's Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And I was like, yeah, Close. I didn't even really think about that, but <laughs> this is actually uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond, so Pink Floyd, and uh, Mr. Blue Sky. Mr. Blue Sky, so a little ELO there. Uh, both these, both, both of those blocks are actually over on the Poetry Hillside Vineyard, um, although we do have some other blocks from the property in here as well. Uh, let me pour you some of this. So this is the Thank 2021. You. So 2021, great vintage. Yeah. Less. Yeah. It was a really good vintage, um, kind of polar opposite of 2011 in that we were kind of a drought um, vintage coming out of the winter. Um, so very dry. I think we got half of it average rainfall in Napa. Um, and so that kind of rushed everything forward. Um, still not like, you know, 2021 wasn't, I would say it wasn't like a hot vintage, like, mm -hmm. you know, something maybe we saw like 15, 16, 17, which were a lot warmer. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, but like we were, you know, full ripening, we were able to pick when, you know, um, we were able to pick basically whenever we wanted to. And it was like a really, um, nice warm fall. So, um, no like rain events, no big heat events, no big heat spikes. Um, so yeah, 2020s are beautifully ripe, but since, um, uh, but they were a little bit cooler in the, um, spring. So like very nervy acid, like lots of beautiful, fresh acidity in the 2021s, mm -hmm. um, that I think lend some really nice balance to these wines. This comes off as classic rock block to me. This is very, it's rock got the, you know, that power, <laughs> that sexy opulent quality. I mean, I'm still getting that chocolate, right? Of course, that we always get from Stagsy District. Um, but there's some nice tension in this wine. I think that's maybe what you're, you know, you're talking about the acidity. Um, I feel this that this is like, this is going to be a classic wine. Like this is going to be a wine that, right now, it's delicious. It's got some verve to it. But you know, five years down the road, ten years down the road, I mean, this is just going to be wonderful. Um, Gosh, that is really nice. Yeah, so this is 60% um, Cabernet Sauvignon, about 20% Malbec, 20% Petit Verdot. Oh, yeah. Um, so a little higher percentages on some of those blenders. And I think, um, yeah, I think we were kind of going for like pushing the rock block and envelope in maybe a year that wasn't super hedonistic, right? Like oh, the 21s yeah, yeah. are very, um, they're very graceful and elegant, um, but, you know, rock blocks turned up to 11. So yeah, yep. um, the Petit Verdot, adds a lot of base notes, adds mm -hmm. a lot of darkness, um, I say, I don't have to color a lot of color, a lot of tannin. You can see it stained um, in the glass. And that Malbec like gives this really beautiful floral and spice and like a little brambly note to it. Um, but yeah, when you put these all together, you know, it's still still a, a primarily Cabernet Sauvignon driven blend and, and yeah. I think it comes off that way. It definitely has that like that structure and that, you know, that core of Cabernet, but accentuated, of course, as you just mentioned um by the other varietals that we have on the property we we grow all five of the bordeaux you know common red varieties on the property so it's nice to be able to bring them all together uh in this wine yeah and these were both um both uh, a big percentage of that petit verdot and malbec were both co-ferments um with cabernet sauvignon so that's something um that's something that we like to do we like to experiment in this winery with is that um you know bringing in blocks that we're familiar with and 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 um, fermenting two different varietals in in the same tank um you kind of get them like integrated earlier i don't mm. know if that makes sense at all like um so those flavors like since they're fermenting together they kind of like meld together um faster than if you were um, blending them later on the blending table sure. so um yeah it's just something something fun nice to see and like sometimes you can pull out you can help like maybe a weaker block with um, you know, like a, a, a Cabernet that's like, you think you're not going to get enough a color or a tannin with you put mm -hmm. some Petit Verdot in there and, and it comes out of the gate, out of the fermenter with a little more muscle on it. Yep. So, yeah. 
here's a nice question that I know you'll you'll be able to answer. So um, question about one percent petite or one percent or low. Uh, what's the purpose of adding? You know that very little bit. One percent is right. very little, very little bit. Uh, what's the point of adding that instead of just you know making something having one option. more right? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it seems very insignificant, right? Uh -huh. Um, it seems insignificant and it also seems like, um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice it in a blend if it was there or not. Um, but yeah, on the blending table, you know, half a percent, 1%, you know, if you make those two different wines, like you definitely pick up, um, you pick up a difference and, and it is noticeable. Um, yeah, like there's just like a Merlot, it can give it a little bit of softening, um it can kind of round the edges a little bit um a little more red fruit that we can get on some of our merlot especially in like you know a cooler year like this um you know more kind of strawberries and like that it's just it, it gives i think if you would taste the two different blends it gives um more complexity mm -hmm. um having it in there than than having it out one of the ways you guys described it to me once in the past was it, it helps connect the the entry to the finish mm -hmm. like it just helps kind of connect the wine um, whereas sometimes, you know, certain varieties will be all attack, right? It's right. like hits you as soon as you take a sip, it's like all there. And then the, and then there's kind of a hollow mid palate and then, it, right. and then you can taste on the finish, but Merlot okay. kind of helps. It, it helps glide across the palate. Seamless, sure. right? That seamlessness. Yeah. So it's, it's great to have all those, uh, mm -hmm. varieties, right. To be able to work with all of them. And of course our wines, um, geez, I think every wine we make is some form of a Bordeaux blend outside yeah. of the Tokelon maybe yeah. is the only 100% Cabernet we make. So Part of our house style, right, is uh, is working with these varietals and and accentuating Cabernet Sauvignon right. and and filling out. We want um, these wines to feel like yeah, complete just, when you're drinking them. Yeah, you know, we don't want to. Yeah, we don't want you guys to taste them and think that there's like a hollow point somewhere or it's missing something or lacking. On you know, we're trying to um, both on the palate and in the flavor and aroma. Like we, we're trying to get like a full a full complete wine um, complex. Love it. So all these wines are great. Um, gosh, they all got, you know, great scores, especially these 21s are getting great scores lately. Um, I'm hoping everybody out there who received them is, is enjoying them or thinking of, you know, trying them sometime soon. Uh, I was going to say that uh, if you open something like the 20, uh, even, even the 2011, um, you know, full disclosure, these wines were opened. I actually opened them last night. I wanted to try them. Uh, my dad came over for dinner, so I pulled the corks uh, to see what his thoughts were. And um, he thought they were great, but I've now, you know, there was only a little bit poured out of the out of the bottle. I put the cork back in it. Now here we are 24 hours later, and it's given this wine some time to, you know, allow that bouquet to develop and just, you know, some of those um those aromatic qualities come out even further and then just a little bit even softening on the palate. So don't be afraid to open these wines early. Open them in the morning if you're gonna have them with dinner and just, you know, keep them at temperature, of course, keep them cool, right. but um strongly encourage, you know, giving these wines air. Uh, it, it can truly help them uh, help them come out and and really wow whoever you're sharing them with. Sure. So, um, gosh, I don't know. Do we have anything else to cover? That's that's it for the wines. It was kind of a short short run through tonight, um, short lineup. But uh, let me see if there's any other questions in the chat. If there's anything from anybody else right now, please you know throw it our way. Do some quick shout outs to uh, let's see Daniel here from New Jersey. Send some Sauvignon Blanc and Diamond Sky and even the Heritage Scones Pinot. Nice. So. Awesome lineup. Love it. Lisette sit down in Miami. Uh geez, summer. Yeah. Hot summer. Of course. You get you get all that. So get that Chardonnay. That'll that'll certainly keep you cool. Um cheers from Minnesota. Sipping 2021 Diamond Sky. I love it. Oh, go Vikings. Vikings. Yeah. I need a quarterback. Hey, my dad's a Vikings fan, believe it or not. That's a fun fact. Growing up in Alberta, um, getting the Vikings games was one of the only uh, NFL games that were broadcast to Alberta. So there's a fun fact about my dad. He's a Vikings fan. So he's probably right, you, right uh, there with you, Mark. So go Vikings. Um, Robert from Hilton Head having a 2021 Rutherford. I love that wine. I think it's just like super seamless and easy to, you know, easy to get into a uh, good pick. Uh, let's see. We handled a couple of these questions here. Uh, we got a couple new messages. We got the skull. Nice. There we go. All right. Love it. Uh, All right. Alejandro's just down the street. All right. Perfect. You're loving this warm weather too then, right? <laughs> it's been been nice uh, to kind of have a little break in the rain. Um, where are the vineyards at, by the way? Where are you oh, kind of thinking? Like, where, how's the growing season going so far? Yeah. Well, so we have, we've gotten like a lot of, we've had a lot of rainy days, a lot of cool, like it's been kind of a cold, cool winter and 
um, start to spring. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just barely over average rainfall. So like mm -hmm. there's been a lot of like, you know, cold rainy days, but not a lot of actual like quantity of rain. Right. Just um, a slow kind of. Storm. Yeah. And so we're just we're just over. We're just above average. Um, but I, I don't know if you noticed, like no frost events. Like I think we had one. I think we had one frosty morning, which right now when we've got we've just hit bud break. Um, we're like I think the shoots are somewhere between like four and twelve inches. So like right when right when the buds burst and the first like shoots are coming out, that's when we're vulnerable. Really, any time mm -hmm. after the buds burst, we're we're vulnerable to frost. But we really only get frost like up until like April fifteenth. So right. there's really only like a couple of weeks there where where the vines start growing and we're still getting frost. Um, and so. Um, you know, that can have an effect on fruit um, set and quantity mm -hmm. um, if you have any kind of like frost damage. So we haven't had any really any frost events. I think there's one frosty morning on a Sunday mm -hmm. um, and that was it. So uh, it looks like we're in the clear and um, mm -hmm. and yeah, now we're we're just hoping kind of the weather warms up and we get some nice, nice, right. even even warm growing days. For, we're set like, up for another good vintage, right? Yeah, like for sure. More or less. It looks great. Awesome. Um, one last question here. Uh, how much time should we allow the wines, reds, whites to air out before we consume in the glass or in the bottle? Um, what do you think? Uh, I mean, the whites, the Sauvignon Blanc, like I think, you know, that you pretty much open it and drink it. I mean, mm -hmm. you can, I, I would watch it, you know, and you can see it like open up a little bit, but that, that wine would kind of make, um, to be consumed like quickly. Um, yeah. And especially I'm saying also at aging it in bottle too. I mean, yeah. like you said, the 22s are showing really beautifully right mm -hmm. now. Um, and the 21 or the 23 is great, but like, it, you know, in like a couple of months, it's probably going to be better. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, reds, reds for, for opening. I mean, it's nice to open. It's nice to give the reds like some time, especially like the younger, the younger the wine is. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to give it more time in air. Like, yeah, if, if you're going to open it, you can open it the night before. If you're going to use the decanter, maybe not, you know, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit closer mm -hmm. to when you're consuming. Um, I like to just try it. I like to open it, take, you know, take a sip, try it, see what it's like, and then let it, let it yeah. sit and, and, you know, open up for a couple of hours before you're going to pour it. Um, and then, and then you kind of get used to your style. Like everyone, I mean, I don't think there's a, a right or wrong answer. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of preferences. So mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, if you, um, if you kind of get more used to a wine or winery, like a house style, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you know, you can kind of see, like, if you like opening those, how, how long before you consume them, you like opening them or airing them or decanting yeah. them. Um, so it's kind of personal preference. I would say, um, I, I fully agree. I would say, you know, the older the wines get, the less air you need to give them. Um, the 2011, for example, I think that's, you know, you'll want to open that and give it probably an hour um to just you know aerate a little bit before you before you dive into it i mentioned that you know that bottle that we had to that we tasted tonight was open yesterday so it, it it's not gonna like fall off or anything like that so you don't have to worry about that the older the wines get i mean if we were talking about 1991 um or 71 i mean right. you probably want to just open that and and get into it <laughs> but um uh that's that's kind of one uh general rule of thumb that i look at is uh the older the wine the less time you need for it to be open um, but I think the most important thing, like I was, I totally agree. I'm going to jump in and just say, I think, I think temperature is, is mm -hmm. something I'd want to be more thoughtful of instead of so, you know, worrying too much about how much air to give the wine, because let's say you open that, that, you know, you open this great ball of Cabernet and it's cellar temperature and you taste it, it tastes great. And then you're going to serve it eight hours later, but now it's been sitting out on the counter and then the bottle's at, you know, 70 degrees right. and you start pouring it for dinner. I mean, it's going to throw the wine off because it just got, it got too warm. And it's, and same thing with Sauvignon Blanc, but almost, you know, the opposite in that you don't necessarily want to keep it ice cold, right? You keep right. that Sauvignon Blanc ice cold and it's just going to taste like, you know, it's going to taste very bright and acidic. Like it's not going to, you're not going to get the aromatics. You're not going to get those flavors and those layers that we talk about. So, um, you know, if you have the Sauvignon Blanc in the fridge, take it out of the fridge, open it up maybe let it sit at what, 20, 30 minutes before you'd yeah, want to serve it minutes. so that it comes up to temperature a little bit. Um, so that, that, that's kind of, that's how I answer that question all the time. It's like, I'm like, don't worry too much about how much air to give it. Worry more about, you know, the temperature. Yeah. Um, cause that can, that can really impact the wine. And sometimes it's nice too to open the bottle, have, like you say, have a glass, 
and then see where it goes over the course of the night. If you're just enjoying it between, you know, yourself and your, your significant other, you can kind of watch how the wine evolves yeah. over the course of the, of the evening. If you're serving it with dinner, I would, you know, if it's like six o'clock dinner and, and you're, and you've got eight people and everybody's getting a glass, then you're going to want to open it earlier and make sure it's just ready to go by, you know, six o'clock. So great question. I'm always ha happy to answer questions like that. Um, but you know, these two, these two old, old dads got to get back to their families now and, and cook up dinner. So uh, if that's, if that's everything from you guys, we appreciate you logging on tonight and asking some great questions and, and sharing with us the wines that you're enjoying. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. If you want to book a tasting or get some more wines, try some of this 2011 or get some of that beautiful bright Chardonnay for the summertime. Um, we've got all these great wines available for you. So please reach out to us. Let us know um, if there's anything we can do for you. And again, thank you so much for yeah, your support. You. It means everything to us. It helps us, you know, continue to pursue our passions of making wine and growing grapes and, and being a family owned and operated winery. So that's going to be it. Yeah. I guess that's all. Okay. Thank you guys. Well, Cheers. thanks Travis. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. Thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll see you in the fall.